Welcome back to Boys and Ghouls Film Review, folks. I'm your host, Sarah Stevenson, and this is my co-host, Mike Stevenson. Hi, guys. So tonight we'll be reviewing the Disney live-action Aladdin that came out in 2019. That's the Will Smith one. Yeah, I know yeah. in the past I have never been really interested, interested but since um, I was going to review it last year, but since what happened with Will Smith became... Yeah. Well, I've streamed. I decided to postpone until the following year. What did Will Smith? Well, Will Smith belted Chris Rock during the Oscars. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, that's fine. That's, that's over and done with now. But it's Chris, all in the past. Actually, Chris Rock deserved it, okay? So well, he was being nasty about bah, Will Smith's wife. Bah. I don't condole people saying nasty things yeah. about other people. Chris Rock deserves it, but Will Smith should have controlled himself a tad. He should have just okay. learned to um, ignore the jokes and try to focus well, on other yeah. people. He was being light-hearted and he, mm. you know, he said the wrong thing and yeah. it went it went pish. Yeah. Anyway, Will Smith, matter. of course, let's move Will on. Will Smith has apologised to the, aco- the Oscars and to the people there, but he has not apologised to Chris Rock. Or well, Chris his, um, Rock deserves uh, his. Well, he um, should not have said anything. If you can't say anything nice no, at the Global Awards, anything. don't say anything nasty exactly. to yeah. other actors. Yeah, don't flag off or you. Don't go around saying something nasty about someone else's wife because it's you it's are being a mad health, mouth. She had health issues. So she had health yeah, issues. Yeah, leave so, it at that. Yeah, leave it alone, you yeah. don't go around joking about someone's health. So I'm sort of on Will Smith's side, okay? But he could have contained himself a bit. Yeah. I would have knuckled him out in the car park, Will. I would have done, too. <laughs> I wouldn't have done it there in front of the cameras. Yeah, so this has kind of um, given him um, a lot no, of problems. No. And it's no. probably has made his career a lot more harder to get in more hey, roles these days. He's not as bad as Amber Heard, is he? Don't worry about not it. Not as no, bad, no, but okay, right. again, as I said before, <laughs> it's made his career a lot more rocky. Oh, I don't think it did. I think it's water under the bridge now. So anyway... Here we go, uh, Aladdin, 2019, American musical fantasy, mm. live action one, co-produced by Disney. Well, Disney did the original animated anyway, so. Now, here we go, produced by Dan Lin and uh, Jonathan Eric, 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 uh, e- E-I-R-I-C-H, mm. uh, directed by Guy Ritchie. Now, Guy's been around, a few, uh, done a few movies over the years, so mm. and he's, not, he's not too bad in this one. Mm-hmm. Screenplay by... John August and Guy Ritchie. No surprise there. Uh huh. Uh, based on Disney's Aladdin animated, which was based on the A Thousand yeah, and One Arabian Nights yeah, tale. Back in the whatever. 1992 one, which yeah. um, a lot of people have compared well, this one to that. Well, and this is a remake of it. I know it's a remake, but a lot of people no. still prefer the original for gosh sakes. No, yeah, the re- they like the original because they, that's the first one. Yeah. This was a live action version of the animated yeah. and you can do much more with an animated than you can do with a real live that's one. That's true. You can actually uh, create your own characters. make it funnier because there are, they are cartoon characters. Mm. They are not real human beings. Take Alf. Mm-hmm. The, the TV series Alf. Mm. As a little furry alien critter, he can get away with really crappy, funny lines. You make him into a human being trying to pass off the same lines, it just don't work. So, yeah. So same sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. And I feel the same that Robin Williams, who played yeah. the genie to perfection back in the 1992, and when he did the TV series that came after it, it did really well. In the and oh, I think and the other two two other movies that came yeah. after this one, I mean that that one, it was one they were wonderful. I mean I liked um, Robin Williams, and I really really wish he didn't. Took his life. Oh, he didn't. Look, he do did. You, he, I know, but do you get on and get over this crap, please? I, I can't help it. A lot of people oh, have. Lord, they look, still look, grieve over Robin the fact. Robin Williams may have ended his life for one reason or another. He had a health issue yeah. and he didn't want to go downhill and, and, and uh, suffer more health issues. Yeah. So he may have committed suicide. I don't know. I don't care. I miss the man. He, he was a, a pleasure to watch on film and stuff. Yeah. He had issues and he's in a better place now. Yeah. Leave it alone. But again, um, as I said before, it's a little hard to find any remaining car- um, you know, comedy actors out there anymore as because of his caliber. Because there Jim Carrey is looking at retiring last year and I don't and the only ones left are the lousy ones who are not really that good. <laughs> the lousy ones. No, they, they're no, they're not lousy ones, just a different type of humour. And the problem is, there's a gap. We need some new ones. We need a new Robin Williams. We need a new 
whatever. I mean, I mean uh, yeah. Uh, he's the guy who played in the Mummy movies. Uh, Joe, uh, Brendan Fraser. Brendan now, he, Fraser. Well, he's getting old now and got a bit of weight on. He can't do the same stuff yeah. he did 20 or 30 years ago. And yet he's you know, planning on making a comeback. Yeah, but it's not going to be the same. I don't even know it's going to work. But he's from in, what, that, uh, that when he plays like Tarzan type thing, does it? Yeah, that yeah. Um, George of the Jungle. George of the Jungle. Yeah, that, that was fun. But, you know, he, he guys yeah. like that, nice, subtle humour, good, funny, look good. Good, bud. We I don't mean, have good. a lot of guys like that now, which is a shame. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, live action, yada, yada, yada. Uh, yeah. Based on whatever, yada, yada, yada. Princess, uh, plot Aladdin and Princess Jasmine. We all know the story. I won't get into it. Now, budget. Drum roll. Here we go. Budget one hundred and eighty three million dollars to uh-huh. make. You're just saying what? However, box office one billion plus. Hmm. The reason why I'm stressing that at the moment, one billion, is because some of the critics have got no freaking idea. Okay. Uh, no, because they, they, they make some terse comments about it and stuff. Yeah, what are you getting at, guys? Well, honestly. Um, yeah. Now here we go. I'll go through the cast reasonably quickly, but. Will Smith, he plays a dual role. He's a narrator at the beginning of it and at the end of it as a human being. There's mm. a reason for that. We'll talk mm-hmm. about it later. Yeah. Uh, he's, a, he's called the Mariner. It, there's no name mentioned. And he also plays the genie. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, the CGI, I mean, the genie parts were CGI'd and many of the human bits, he did human. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Mm. So, so he, he uh, part of me was some some of his role was CGI, yeah. but he did the voice. Yeah, I think that that idea was based off the musicals. They see they based a bit of a a Disney musical, you know, that's on stage, and they kind of um, made his. Um, I guess they kind of used the same materials from that to p- p- co put into this probably sp- project. Can I get on the cast, please? Go on, Mike. Uh, now, a young man. Um, I'm not quite sure. He's Middle Eastern, I guess. Um, Mena Masood uh, plays Aladdin. Now, we, I won't say who the hell Aladdin is. Of course, the mm. movie is called Aladdin. If you don't yeah. know who Aladdin is, I'm going to see my breath. Now, um, now, a lady by the name of Naomi Scott plays Jasmine. Mm. She is a very attractive young lady, and she fits the role quite nicely. Mm. Uh, it's the image put in the, uh, the animated version... She fits it quite nicely, I think. I so, think yeah, that yeah. both um, the actors playing Aladdin and yeah, Jasmine, yeah, too, yeah. they did a kind of okay job for, yeah, I for think them. They, they, they suited the looks and the roles and mm. the voices and the personalities. Mm-hmm. I think that was part of the, They had two females lined up for her role, but they couldn't agree on who to place in the Jasmine role until they picked uh, the Aladdin role because they wanted to check the chemistry. Ah, oh, good idea. So, yeah, and they, they seemed to work. Mm. Now, uh, now, someone by the name of Marwan Kenzari plays Jafar. Mm. Uh, he's a naughty guy. Yeah, he's, not he's knocking the director's Vizier. choice. Oh. Not knocking the director's choice or the casting director. I just don't feel Jafar from this role. He uh, he was a good actor, but mm. he wasn't as imposing and as frightening as he could have been. They could have got somebody else, or they could have made him. A little bit more terrifying, yeah, yeah more, bit more sinister, saying, maybe, Mike. yeah. So, maybe, okay. Oh. Now, a guy called uh, Navid Naghaban plays the Sultan. Mm. Uh, I don't know where he came from. <laughs> <laughs> Nasim Pedra plays uh, Dahlia, yeah. yeah, which is a handmaiden to Jasmine. Yeah, mm. uh, I won't. There were a couple of other people there. I won't go on to it, uh, but. They're, when they were doing the casting, they were trying to get people who suited the commercially acceptable idea of what the people in the Arabian Nights tales would look like. Mm. Some people thought, oh, it's based in the Middle East, they should all look Middle Eastern. But the, the Arabian t- Nights tales weren't necessarily Middle Eastern. They could have been Indian. They could have been Northern China. They could have been, It was on, well, along the Silk Road. Well, I did tell you, Mike, that yeah. um, the Aladdin story came from Asia. I just and said I did say, what I, I was know. saying. I'm just saying that... <laughs> and the I don't know who did it no. or bothered to put in the some story of the earlier tales placed it in Arabia or a, somewhere. They placed it in Arabian Nights tales. Yeah, and but the tales are just gathered, the tales told. 
mm. possibly in Arabia, about tales they received from people travelling the Silk Road. Mm -hmm. And the Silk Road went from China to, I don't know how far across the, yeah. uh, the Middle East to wherever. Yeah. Um, so they would have been multiple countries involved. So you can't mm. say, oh, they're not Indian or they're not Chinese or they're not uh, whatever, they're not Arabs. It's multiple countries. So mm -hmm. you can't say, oh, it's, they're doing uh, Arabian Nights but looks Indian. I mean, well, sorry. Yeah, and not to mention years ago when they did do the the Disney one, the the Sultan's Palace looked like um, like um, Taj Mahal yeah, in India. Like, yeah, Taj Mahal. That, that, that style of architecture because people could identify with it. Think about it. What do you want? A little mud hut with some uh, palm leaves on top or something mm. people can identify with? Yeah. So let's yeah. move on with I, that. Yeah, Come I seem on. to recall that people question... <laughs> they question, question everything. ...the 1992 version of Aladdin. I mean, they thought... Um, I think people in the Middle East were a bit annoyed by it. I think they were mostly annoyed that that with the actors they selected, even though they're English actors, therefore... they. But if they were, as Mike Woods point out to me... They w if they were casted as Arabian actors or anything like that, it will be proved difficult to hear or hear their uh, accents well, wait a minute, and hear their voices for I'll, their accents. Okay, well, I'll, I was going to talk this, talk about this after you did your talk about the story. Okay, here we go. For those, uh, how do you put it? Okay. Some people said, oh, they should have used actors from the Middle East and that sort of thing. That's yeah. fine. But the problem is, yeah, Sarah made a good point. If they don't speak English and they're making a movie for the English-speaking people, have you all, all be overdubbed? And they said, oh, they could be people in the background just walking around and stuff being the extras. Well, that's fine too. But if they don't understand English, how are they going to follow the director? Um, blah, blah, blah. It just keeps going on and on and on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the point is, getting back to actors, um, a typical example. Now, out of Egypt, now I'm not, I'm not insulting the Egyptian people, but the only Egyptian, oh, the universally known Egyptian actor that I'm aware of is Omar Sharif. Now, I think Omar's dead now, or very, very old. Um, he was in Dr. Zhivago and stuff, but um, they're a very big country of lots and lots of people. You would think if they're into acting and movies and stuff, they would have had a lot more people on the international stage. They don't. A lot of in a lot of in uh, Middle Eastern countries might be doing their own movies and television programs yeah. for their own country. They're not known on the international stage. They're not. They don't speak English necessarily. Mm. Um, there's one or two people who've come out of the Middle East and have made it in. Sorry, American productions and English productions, not mm. their own. So that is probably why they're not casting from the local guys. See? Because the local guys aren't good enough on the national stage. And I'm not knocking them, it just mean they've got to polish a rat and lift the game a bit so they can be acceptable. Now, I'm not finished. You look at the, uh, the Japanese and the Chinese and some of the other Asian countries, they make their own type of movies to suit their own audience. Yes, they do. Now, some of those movies aren't acceptable on the world stage, but the local countries like them. Some of them have actually made it to the world stage, have been overdubbed, and they're quite pleasant to watch. But they wouldn't be, wouldn't be deemed to be an A-grade movie in a multiplex in any city in the world. Because it's a target audience, mm. like a cult, uh, not a, an art house uh, mm. movie. So, yeah. so it's all relevant to, if you've got a big movie-making conglomerate in America or England or somewhere else, and they're targeting the world, they've got to make it saleable. Yeah. So this bit about, oh, you should have had a black person or have a white person or a Chinese person yeah. or so on, so get over it, yeah, guys. Yeah, that's another thing, guys. <laughs> Seeing as the animation version was mostly uh, just a matter of just getting the right voice or actor. Look at um, the guy who does Batman, the original guy. He did an awesome take on Batman. Does not mean he has to dress up in a tuxedo and look like Bruce Wayne. Right, right Mike? We talk about man. You talk about Adam West. The original, no, no, not Adam West. I was talking about the um, oh, before the voiceover actor. Oh, the voiceover actor. Kevin, um, you know, Coven. I think his name was Who? Kevin Coven. I think his what, name. What, no, 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 no. You know, he's a famous um, voiceover actor. Has I been a lot of 
Batman animation oh, well, I one watched, throughout I the nineties. I the animation. I just don't know. It. And I know for yep. a fact he's been he's been he passed away last year. Oh, and yeah. of course, according to online. Mark Hamill has decided to retire from, you know, leave that series because he feels upset they lost one of his best friends from that series. Oh, he was playing the Joker at the time in those said episodes. Oh, okay. So he's kind of um, made his disappearance. So, anyway, look, look, but voice actors are good. They, 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 I mean, Sarah did a, uh, a movie just a couple of, just recently, a couple of years ago, uh, and so we had an Australian guy putting on a Russian accent. Mm-hmm. We couldn't get a Russian, okay? Get mm-hmm. over it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's move. And next, I played a Russian submarine uh, commander on the radio. I had to put a Russian accent on. So Yeah, mm, moving on. Hey. I'm just saying that it, it's, it's imagery. We need to focus, Mike. You focus. started it. It's your own fault. You started talking about the We people. haven't even got to the Aladdin but this you one You started currently. it. Yes, and I'm finishing it. Okay, fine. But it's all mm-hmm. imagery, folks. So let's get down to the real the nitty gritty um, Aladdin. This one, obviously, 19, the 2019 one. So it begins. We see a chartered boat heading toward Agrabah. And who's on it? None other than Will Smith, who's playing a fisherman. With yeah, a f- Mariner, fisherman, Mariner, whatever it is. Fisherman, yeah. you get the gist. Boat person. Yeah. And <laughs> his kids are envying this very massive boat with hundreds of. Uh, probably floors on it, and they say, I would love to have a boat like that. And then his da- the dad says, uh, because it's so big, because this little boat has kept us through w- wet weather, harsh storms, a- and has kept out the rain. But the, fam- but the kids say, what, we still get rats and stuff like that. Just not, not impressive. But even they that's they n- taste nice. But even that's the open. big boat may get a few rats in its they core. Do. In that's its- why you have a... Cats on boats. We used to anyway, yeah. Anyway, his wife tells him to te- tell them a story about their their lives. So he tells them the uh, Aladdin, the lamp, and the princess story. Of course, the kids um, want to hear their dad sing the song, the story. So he sings the opening from the original, you know, the... Uh, from a far away place where the camels, camels the Arabian boom. Nights, whatever. The Arabian Nights yeah, song. Yeah, it's yeah, such yeah, a beautiful yeah, yeah. song. I'm not going to sing it. So we far, we kind of fast, we we, we rewind to the past. Like say, he, he, um, he, he's telling the story. Say, yeah. yeah, we then flash back to the past many years ago where we see Aladdin, you know, get stealing from the, from you know, the usual story. Usual people. Being chased around by people. And, yeah. and meanwhile, Princess um, Jasmine is in the palace, um, mooning on the fact that her dad won't let her out of, out of the and, palace. And wants to marry her off, won't give her any say, and have the running of the state, yeah. you know, country, whatever. She then makes a point you know, of, the, you know, behind the scenes, going out of the palace and trying to explore her the city itself. Yes. So she runs into Aladdin, and along the way, they end up getting chased by the guards. Eventually, they... they they eventually lose them, and they head up to Aladdin's place. A nice little uh, deserted little... Um, rooftop. Rooftop. Yeah, we his own penthouse. Hey? That's not bad for us. Oh, yeah, Mike and I were discussing it last night when we watched it. That um, Wouldn't the people downstairs know he's living up there on yeah. their roof? Considering. Mm. <laughs> it's a bit odd when you think about it. It's okay. And how's he paying rent? Well, wait, he can't pay he's rent. He's not paying rent. He's, <laughs> he's squatting. Yeah, uh, so... <laughs> Homesteader, um, whatever you <laughs> Yeah, anyway, um, Jasmine ha- makes a point of heading off at one point, and he- she accuses Aladdin of stealing her mother's bracelet, oh, which yeah. she has bought with her. But, yeah. And, of course, Aladdin doesn't think she's a, a servant. He, he, he knows that... She thinks that she's a servant to the princess. Who works in the palace. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, Jasmine heads off, and he finds out that Abu, he has a monkey... You know, a boo with him, yeah, boo. And, and he ends up. St- he ends. He actually still had the bracelet, and Naughty this sort monkey. of. Um, I guess it was a boo's plan to get Aladdin and her t- t- together, oh. or yeah. at least make him, match make it. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Jasmine <laughs> eventually meets this current prince, who's a total jerkwad. Well, not really jerkwad. He's a total doofus head. Nothing. Well, he's a, a doofus suitor, head. A suitor. He's a suitor, a prince, whatever. Yeah, he's a suitor. And he's a total the, doofus. He wants a hand in marriage. Well, he can have the hand, but he can't have he's anything else. He's a goofus. Else. <laughs> yeah, he's an idiot. Anyway, 
Um, Raja, the tiger, pet tiger, gives him a run for his money. Yes. Browls and probably, I wish he chewed well, about Well, we think he might have trimmed his fingernails, maybe. We do not know yet. We do <laughs> see him much later on with his fingers probably still intact. Mm. <laughs> with a few um, scars. Well, you got on with it. Anyway, so, <laughs> um, meanwhile, Jafar is trying to find the diamond in the rough. Yeah, yeah. See, oh. he's trying to find it through the dungeons, finding, but yeah. he can't seem to find that a diamond rough for you, you newbies. There is they're looking for someone who, from a poor birth, who has got a pure heart, who can enter the cave of wonders to get the magic lamp. Yeah, yeah of okay. course. That, that brings up the speed. He doesn't yeah. find anyone. Like he thinks. They're, but then they're again, all they're all nasty. They all smell bad. Yeah, poo. <laughs> I don't know well, why. Well, they, they don't have showers down the dungeons. They've got, of course, they've got a small bad. Of course, yeah. he mm. has the um, sultan mm. wrapped around his little finger with his magical powers. Yeah, he, he hypnotizes the sultan into doing things occasionally. And he wants uh-huh. to invade um, a neighborhood kingdom that, according to the sultan, was actually um, his wife's late king. You know, kingdom. Yeah. His late wife's kingdom. Well, yeah, the family. It's a, they're supposed to have a treaty or something. Or yeah, yeah, so he doesn't... They, they're sort of um, um, friends, you know, friend, you know, and all that stuff. And therefore, there's, there's no reason to invade them. But... I didn't think so. Anyway, so anyway, uh, Aladdin eventually sneaks into the palace and Jafar sneaks, sneaks, gets sneaks. word of this and knows that he might be the diamond in the rough he's looking for. How? We don't know. Maybe he f- he find out much later on through his magic crystal ball, or whatever. Well, he didn't have the internet back in those days, so that's, that's a good that's good that's good. That's a good, good guess. guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I remember in the other one, the animation one, Baseball. he finds out through a diamond that the Sultan has and was able to find the diamond of the rough, you know, like that. Of course, this is different. So anyway, he <laughs> soon enough, um, um, Aladdin meets the. Um, the princess, and of course, she continues playing the servant role as best she can. Of course, her servant doesn't pick up on this until she feels like, "What the hell are you talking about? Are you on drugs? Are you all can high? I have some, please, you, whatever." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But eventually, she plays along, and eventually, Cat Raja seems to really like Aladdin. He, he, he licks his face. <laughs> Uh. Anyway, <laughs> Aladdin quickly makes his escape again, and he takes, um, I guess, a a hairpin or a hair um, yeah, clip. Yeah, a little clip off back the hair. Yeah. It says, and says I'll return it to you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> he, also, he also gave the bracelet back. He just put it on her hand without her knowing it. <laughs> He's very good at this. Yeah. He then gets cornered. I wouldn't trust my wallet. No. Yeah. He then corn- gets cornered by the guards and then um, he gets whisked away to the dunes to meet Jafar. We don't know how this happens, but he was abducted again. Anyway, oh, easy come, easy go. Jafar explains to him that the girl he's courting is the Princess Jasmine, and the Ooh. and the fact that that him and Aladdin have a common bond or common, you know, have a common background. Jafar I think knows what Aladdin is like because he came from the same sort of background. Yeah, and he crawled up the ladder by killing and and scheming and yeah. cheating people and everything. All, all the good things the, you do to get there. Just yeah. so you guys know, uh, good CEO, Jeff uh, yeah. hates being second. A second. He wants to be top dog. He wants to be top dog, as in he hates oof, oof. being called second because he's second best to the Sultan. He therefore he wants to he be the Sultan. Yes, he. That sort of is um bit of a, a big problem with with um, that sort of thing. So, anyway, he tells Aladdin that he'll help him woo the princess by helping him go to this cave thing, which is a um, special cave of wonders. And Aladdin fits that profile of going inside the cave He's and nice getting boy. the lamp. So, they head to there and they encounter the cave, which looks exactly like the one in the animation from years ago. Very nice. And the voice is dead on similar to I the think, actor. I'm not quite sure. I didn't read up on it too much, but I, I, it sounds like, I think it's the same voice, same, same person. Yeah, it sounds yeah, very same similar. Voice actor. Yeah. Only one may enter. <laughs> Only a diamond in the rough. Yeah, that yeah, sort of stuff. Of course. And I think he did the tiger too. <laughs> anyway, Aladdin heads inside. Baby boo. And with a boo, the monkey. And oh, no. 
And then we watch him descend in a different kind of way than the animation did. Instead of a smooth walk down the steps, we get a s- sort of a little slide down the steps. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 something gives way and he slides down a thing and ends Passes. up on a, a rock. Yeah. And, and he hops over rocks and gets we, out of where little treasure is. And yeah, he goes before we get to that, Mike, <laughs> we do see encounter the treasures, a little bit of the treasure along the way, and some of it um, gets a lot tempted. I yes. mean, I think that and the boot. yeah, Jeff uh, tells him this way ahead, saying you will be tempted if you so much as touch something there, you will oh, be not touch. Yes, yeah. of course. Um, Aladdin reminds Boo not to touch Touchy. Yeah. I am amazed that when they do encounter carpet later on, um, carpet is part of the cave. Well, well, he's not a jewel or anything. He's up trapped in there like yeah. everybody else. Probably yeah, yeah, he's so different. Who knows how long he's been there? Anyway, they free carpet under a rock. He's was he, he, uh, part of him stuck under a rock here. Yeah. yeah, and eventually, um, um, Aladdin quickly heads to the top where where the Lamp is. Yeah, b- it's a b- on a, a high, big, a big high pile of rocks. Pile yeah. of rocks. Yeah, yeah. And as he's climbing, he's um, a booze marveling at a big red ruby mm. that's giving it, him um, the weird, greedy eye. And he grabs it to hold it and look at it. Yeah, Aladdin at the same time has grabbed the lamp, but then he sees Abu admiring the <sighs> ruby and realizes we're screwed. Yeah, yeah. We're and of course, bugger, the yeah, yeah. lion screws yells that you've touched the forbidden treasure yeah. and you'll never see the light of day again. ever again. Boom. And then we get the whole lava and whole and fire the, and brimstone oh, and, yeah, thing. And rocks start fill, falling from the ceiling and so all the good things you get in the cave. Yeah. In Aladdin there. quickly um, get, gets onto a carpet and they try to dodge and get away from it. And get up it. to the opening where of course, Jaff- when good they old get, Jafar's waiting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Aladdin quickly tries to give Jafar the lamp but only to... Um, it to be stolen by Abu, no less. And, and, and it ends up back in the cave, and Jafar is lampless. Yeah, mm-hmm. he is furious. He though. is not in a happy state. <laughs> yeah, Aladdin and is trapped, and they realize, oh, screwed, and all that stuff. And he then takes up the lamp, and he looks it over. It looks like an ordinary lamp. Well, not really an ordinary lamp. It's Very looks, nice. It looks pretty interesting looking. And he's... He starts rubbing yeah, it, it a little bit, and yeah. then, poof, a green, or, no, a bluey, not green, a bluey um, genie, genie appears. Cover. Of course, he comes off as, uh, oh, I'm a genie. And then he starts saying, okay, where's your master? Where's your boss? And, and all that stuff. Of course, Alan says, um, you mean the um, the guy in charge of this? Well, he's outside. And technically, Aladdin was the one who rubbed the lamp. Therefore, Aladdin is the boss, technically. Well, there you go, then. Of course, um, Genie comes... In this Genie, I should say, he comes off as more of the boss than Aladdin sometimes in this in this, ser- in this movie. An advisor. Advisor I'm or a, a bit of a boss. I don't know. Try to guide him in his life. Yeah, A yeah. mentor, if you will. Yes. Now well, it does show through, anyway. Mm. Eventually, um, we get the song, You Got a Friend in Me song. It was beautiful. Very nice. Well done, yeah. Oh, yes. It's pretty good. And eventually, um, Aladdin um, doesn't really exactly say a wish, but he actually uh, gets Genie to get them out of the um, cave. Well, he, he tricked Genie into getting them out of the cave by getting a boo to rub the lamp. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't rub the lamp. And, he did, and they had a look. Yeah. And, and Abu was actually the one rubbing the lamp when he asked, he, he said the wish to get out of the case. So yeah. that was Abu's wish. <laughs> and that, that gets me honest. If he's allowed to get three wishes. Yes. All right. Right. And Abu can rub the lamp and he can voice the wish for him. That would make six wishes. And if he kept the lamp and he got married to Jasmine and he passed the lamp over to her, so he can get three wishes. Oh, good point. That's fine wishes. Yeah, anyway, no, not so much. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, they're in the desert. Um, Genie's really, because he's been in face, inside, he's been inside the lamp for so many yeah, years. For, yeah, and he has to look at brass, 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 brass. Oh, is that um, a, a different colour? No, it's brass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really a yeah, hilarious yeah. skit. And he's outside. He's, I'm getting pale blue here on yeah. dark blue. You of know. course, Alan <laughs> says, yeah. if I... If yeah. I'm going to make all my wishes h- here, I mean, if I take you back to Agaba, won't people think you're a bit blue? You know, blue, and of course, um, 
genie changes his appearance, of course, um, look, human. look human. At first, it doesn't look Which really like good. Smith, he? And soon yeah. enough, he um, <laughs> says, oh, okay, he's, he gets his skin the dark color. And he says, and Alan says, um, do you really need the top knot? And he says, that's my cherry on top. Yeah, he's, he's top knot. He likes his top knot. Yeah, <laughs> I got yeah, it. It was a nice touch. Yeah. Anyway, um, Aladdin asks Genie what would he wish for? Of course, um, Genie says, no one asked me that question. And he says, simply, freedom. I want to be human. Well, that's... You want to be free. Yeah. yeah. He gets tired of all these orders from what previous what masters. What do you want? What do you want? Stuff you want? like that. Yeah, yeah. And... He, he's never been asked or even requested if he could be free by his master. Not ever. And we don't know if there was any other genie has never been asked that question either. Anyway, move on. Anyway, Aladdin promises him after he does his last two wishes. It's, 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 uh, then the third wish will most likely will set genie free. Yeah. Which is um, pretty much a good deal. So <laughs> yeah. anyway, Aladdin tells him his first wish. that about to... Um, woo the princess and of course Genie informs him previously he cannot make other people fall in love with another person Genie. or make them come back to life or kill one another or get uh, someone to get stuff. killed yeah, one another nah. none of those stuff anyway so he's but mm. Aladdin explains that we had a connection therefore um, but we need but I have to be a prince because she's a princess and, and she needs to, marry a, to marry a prince so he suggests, um, can you make me a prince? And he says, the, the, that it's all about the details. He, he, like, if I, okay, I can, marry, I can make you a prince, but you'd be snuggled up with that guy in the background. <laughs> he made a prince for him. So, uh, yeah, you have yeah. to be very so careful how you phrase things. You have to be careful things. how you phrase these things. Yeah. So he says, okay, um, okay, Genie says, um, I wish you could make me become a prince. So Genie makes him this nice Get up, beautiful white money, elephants, nice. More and he monkeys. makes um, uh, Boo into a big elephant as his transport, and he then makes the big um, caravan of goods and trinkets that the um, prince brings with him. Funny, you, never, you, you didn't see him actually make a palace for him to live in. True. Ah. True, true. He has a whole What's entire desert. live in the sand? Good point. Ah. Anyway, they, we then get the the entrance for Aladdin and his um, party. Uh, yeah, and and the, it sounds the, yeah. like, it starts off like Jurassic Park. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Yeah. boom. Yeah. Yeah, it was like the vibrating gra- glasses and stuff, yeah. <laughs> it's and hilarious. all of a sudden the music starts, just yeah, like in the cartoon version. Way for Prince Ali, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, got yeah. it. I did like Genie's yeah. um, turban. It was so big. It was so yeah, massive. Huge. I hate to think how Will Smith may have felt. No, when it would he wore have been it. empty. It would have been empty. It would have been a very light frame of some material wrapped around it, so yeah, it wouldn't be true. too heavy. Anyway, it's a good intro, and Look the good, king good. was impressed with. Uh, the performance of, and all the the goods and odds. The goodies, the prezies. Of yeah. course, when it comes to meeting and greeting royalty, Alan is not really good at it. He, he's never spoken to a He never before. spoke to a king before, or even a sultan for that matter, or even to a or princess, sultan? considering that he's just found yes. out Aladdin, I mean, Jasmine is a princess, not a, a, a servant. A handmaiden, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he can't, he feels like he cannot speak to her normally. He has to create this whole illusion that he's not the same person. I'm somebody special. <laughs> yeah, that's anyway, he tries to <laughs> buy yeah. her off by saying, "Oh, this is look what I bought with you, me, all that stuff, all gems goodies. and jewels and and a, um, and a barrel of monkeys. A barrel of monkeys. <laughs> uh, who wants to clean up after a bag of monkeys? Don't uh, that. Oh, it's good compost. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Jas- elephant compost. Yeah, is good. Jasmine yeah. rolls her eyes and departs the room. But of course, the Sultan says. Um, stay the night. We have this nice party happening because yeah, of yeah. some harvest. We've got a band coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Aladdin yeah. and uh, Genie were invited to the party. Of course, they meet with Jafar, who's asked him, where is Ababwa? Ababwa. Because that's the big mm-hmm. question. Where is Ababwa? Never a, heard of it. Not never. on the maps. Mm-hmm. Nope. Mm. Anyway, he tries to use his scepter to... Work his magic on him, Aladdin. But luckily enough, Genie was able to get him away. And of course, um, Aladdin is still worried that that Jeffrey is going to really start poke, start poking his nose and start, 
you know, doing really, naughty things, really pressing in on him. Of course, he, they we do get a awesome dance sequence with um, Jasmine and and Aladdin. I mean, and Aladdin. It's a beautiful one, and it was really clever. How he, of of course, um, genie. Um, well, I just so you guys know, Aladdin is not thrilled about going to a party, but Genie wants to take the opportunity to actually court the handmaiden. The handmaiden. Mm. He likes her really much, and he thinks, "Oh, you're not going to ruin this night for me." Type of attitude. Yeah, As I said before, yeah, 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 yeah. it seems that Genie seems to be more the boss than Aladdin is, even though. Um, well, he's guiding him in the right direction. Has yeah, it? and he yeah. says, um, "I'm not letting you ruin my night." Give me a break. It's supposed to be Aladdin's night. Well, he's been locked up for a thousand. He's getting a bit horny by now, you know? No doubt. Anyway, so Aladdin and Jasmine, they have a good dance number, but she's not impressed and decides to head to her room. Of course, later on, um, Aladdin thinks uh, he'll... Tr- uh, Je- Genie suggests to him, "Why don't you? I bought, I made, a la- I created Al- King- Prince Ali. You are the one who has to bring the Aladdin yeah, yeah. back into the character. Yeah, he created the outward appearance of a prince. Aladdin has to be. But the, the uh, Genie can't change what's inside, and he has to show her his uh, yeah true self. Has that? Yeah. Mm. So he takes mm. the opportunity to meet um, the handmaiden and say and ask her for a stroll and stuff like that. And of course she obliges. And of course she also explains to him that that the only way Aladdin could possibly court and like get a La- a Jasmine to like him is if she likes he likes her for his her mind. And don't j- make jokes, Mike. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't mind. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but eventually, uh, when the servant and genie head off, um, Aladdin approaches Jasmine, and Jasmine has got these maps out where she, she's trying to find a babwa. And, yeah, on a map. And she cannot find it. Yeah, mm. Aladdin quickly tries to get Genie to put it on, map. Put it on one of the maps. Mm. At first, it looks like a map fr- from a Disney map, almost, like when you look at it. It did not. Yeah, when he appears on the map, he starts making this nice little illustration and made this interesting um, um, image Whatever. that says Ababa. And, but then eventually he, he writes it, he kind of makes it look more, dumb it down a bit. Of course, eventually. Um, Jasmine, so soon enough, <coughs> Aladdin invites Jasmine on a carpet ride, and we get this beautiful song, A Whole New World. Very nice. That was on the, in, in the animated version. That's as well. my favorite. Very nice, too. I yeah. always love that song, especially in the, the, pre, the past one. Oh, yeah, he bonds really well with Raja the Tiger and all that stuff, too. And I think, that's, I think Raja knows it's an original Aladdin, so therefore he doesn't attack him like the previous pre- prince. Yeah, who's a creep. Anyway, so soon enough, Jasmine guesses or knows that that uh, that Ali is actually Aladdin, and Aladdin uses um, lies again, tells her that he is actually is a bit of a a prince, but he uses um, he dresses as a commoner so he can escape palace life. Of course, um, she kind of um, accepts this. Like she just went out, she kind of left the palace and dressed as a common you know, to actually explore the um, her own city. So it's nothing, she's not completely, well, she's completely fooled by this lie <laughs> and taken in by the lie. Anyway, Aladdin eventually gets her back home and they have a smooch and Aladdin returns to his room and Jeannie is happy that things are going well. Of course, um, Jean, Jeannie still thinks that this lie, that Alan still should tell the truth because this is going to be a very big lie. One day, that the truth will weed itself out, which is true. Eventually, um, Jafar um, gets his men to end up bringing Aladdin to his quarters and plans on throwing him off the of the. Um, off the um, palace. Into the moat down the bottom, which seemed to be an awful long way down to me. But yeah. anyway. <laughs> Ab- Abu was able to get the lamp and was able to use the carpet to get to the place where... Yeah. Of course, a lovely. Uh, uh, where as he's losing breath, 
like, you know, he's in the water, and he rubs the lamp, but he can't really say the words like, Genie, you must save my life. Or, oh, I wish to say you save me life, my life. So the Genie took it under himself to use it as yeah. his implied wish, and he used another wish to save his life. Yes. <coughs> he uses a bit of a contract saying, I, Aladdin, who sound hot body and mine, my, please, wishes... That genie will save my life. And he yeah. may, he go, go he his hand it, and put a cross on it. Yeah, then very good. he yeah. quickly saves Aladdin, and Jafar makes a big lie of his own by saying Aladdin has left the area. Of Elves course, just left the building, folks. And yeah. of course, um, Aladdin appears and tells them that Jafar is deceiving the Sultan. Of course, Jafar uses his magical powers again, trying to win over the Sultan. <clears throat> Eventually, Aladdin works out where this magic is coming from, from the Skep Scepter. And he breaks it in up. And, of course, it finally breaks the spell off on the sultan and probably some of the guards. I think the guards were under a sort of enchantment because they have been uh, always guided by um, Jafar's uh, lack of judgment. Exactly. Of course, Jafar's um, placed into prison, again, going to be executed later on. And they make plans of probably getting all the... And, of course, the Sultan is pleased with Aladdin and says that Aladdin will make a perfectly good husband to um, uh, for, to Jasmine. Of course, um, as things are rolling, get becoming good, um, <coughs> Aladdin has having second thoughts about telling Jasmine and giving Genie his freedom. And uh, Genie's upset by this, so um, he just... Uh, you know, leaves Aladdin to work things so out. He goes to sulk in his uh, little lamp. Yeah. I mean, how rude. Aladdin heads back to his old digs, reflecting on what he's been, you know, thinking and realizing that he's got to um, tell her, obviously. And Sounds he, like a plan, isn't it? Yeah. Meanwhile, while yeah. this is happening, um, Aladdin, Jafar mm-hmm. was able to find the lamp and was able to um, rub it and starts to. Wish he would be the Sultan, which he did, and uh, and then he um, plans on becoming a very powerful sorcerer after everyone refuses to be um, his obedient, um, do his bidding. Obviously, mm. of course, his final he finally wants on the platter um, to Jasmine to be his wife and to destroy um, her mother's kingdom. Of course, how rude. Of course, um, sh- the Sultan gets tortured, literally. He gets tortured by You're Jafar. You're going to try to kill him. Yeah. And, but finally, Jasmine gives in saying, fine, I'll marry yeah. the queen. You leave my father alone, I'll marry you. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Soon enough, we get a wedding procedure. And as they're about to get, I think, well, actually, before we get to that, um, uh, Aladdin does get show up and he tries to take the lamp. But... Jafar opens and tells them, guess what? Aladdin or Ali is not who he is. He's the street whacked. He's not a king or prince or anything like that. And he zaps Aladdin to the farthest corner of the world, which we don't know. It could it looks, be Elastic. Like, yeah, there's a snowy area It somewhere. could be Elastic. It could be the Himalayas, okay? Just yeah. leave it alone. Okay? <laughs> of course, um, Carpet, who was able to find them and take them back. And as they're preparing the final wedding r- rites, whatever, um, the wedding ceremony, um, Jasmine quickly grabs Jaffa, the lamp off, off um, Jaffa and quickly um, jumps from the balcony. And she soon... And guess re- who's outside on the magic carpet? None other than Aladdin and uh, R- Carpet. And yeah. they quickly get chased down by Iago, the... the um, uh, Iago, pa- the, the parrot, parrot, gets turned gets into a, turned into a very big type of griffin-type bird. Oh. Nasty piece, yeah. And gets yeah. chased down. Of course, eventually, um, they get knocked down by... And eventually, um, carpet gets seriously damaged. Yeah. And it then... gets unraveled. Yeah. Yeah, but... And Jeff Arp makes plans of killing and... and um, Killing and executing Aladdin, obviously. Of course, As Al- one would. but Aladdin comes up with an awesome plan in his in his mind, telling Jafar using the um, whole second thing that he says to Jafar that. He'll never be as powerful than the genie. He'll he'll practically. Where did he get his powers from? The genie, no less. And genie, uh, no doubt, is much more powerful, yes. making him 
Jeffa, what he hates most, second. second. And so even the parrot, Iago, says, second, second. Probably want to crack up. Anyway, yeah. it, so he's last. He, he tricks Jeffa into his last wish, make me the most Powerful, powerful being, being in, in the, the universe. universe. And he uh, says, a lot of grey areas in that wish, but very well, the most powerful being in the universe. Bam. And dear old Jeff turns genie. into a mighty, big, hideous-looking genie. And, of course, as he's about to lay waste on the, the, the people in the neighborhood kingdom, he eventually gets told um, that the big bad news... And two slave bracelets appear on his wrist, In, and he realizes that, that oops, I've see, made a mistake. Yeah, he then accuses Aladdin of tricking him, but he oh, says duh. that. But Aladdin says, "This was your wish, not mine. It's yeah, your phone. Yes, you wanted it. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> they, and then Genie remarks that um, a genie without a master goes back into his lamp. And then the good genie picked up and and, and threw well, the. Actually, before that happens, genie the. Jafar gets sucked into his uh, lamp, his own lamp, takes along his bird with, with his him. Um, uh, Iago the bird. And of course, Genie, t- um, the after the spells over the prince and um, princess and the sultan and her s- the servant were, you know, released, ta- were, were from, released the, from, the from the power of the evil guy. Jafar, um, yeah. Then Genie was able to. Throw pic- Jafar's lamp into the Cave of Wonders, which we'll never know hey, what happens next time. Well, another thousand years, I'll kill him off. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so things are all good. Um, everything's... And Sult- the Sultan realises that his daughter has the right to become the next Sultan. Because he's, he, he proves he's wise and a very good leader, or a potentially good leader, so he makes her... Uh, a grape. No, sorry, a sultana. Yeah, yeah and yeah, wait, region, and a sultana region. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and genie. Um, as he was trying to talk, as he is talking to Aladdin, he says that he can make that his final wish to remove the part about the princess must marry a prince rule. So Aladdin could be able to marry. Um, Jasmine, but Aladdin decides to Do make the, right the wish thing. and wishes um, Genie to be free and be human. So he make, makes his wish. The cuffs that are on the Aladdin, on Genie's wrists are removed, Fall off. and he's Dissolve. he's um, human. And he, of course, Genie says, um, "Make a wish or make something." And so he says, "Say you wish for gems," and he says, "Okay, I wish for gems." No, he says, get, "Get it yourself." Yeah, and yeah. he then decides to <laughs> approach the handmaiden, telling her that he wishes to travel the world with her. And she says, yes. when will we leave? And I want kids. And they <laughs> says, yes, yeah. we'll have two. Um, and he says, they then go on to say, we then flash back to the pre- to the present, where we see the two kids we, that were in the opening with, uh, talking to their dad Which and, is and on yeah. the small boat. And of course, to, they remark, she remarks, let's live on a big boat and he says let's make it a small boat you know something we can handle look after. Yeah, 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 yeah. and you know, I think she's fine with that she's a nice peaceful she's a beautiful um, lady no, but, but very nice natured yeah yeah, yeah. and anyway soon enough Aladdin vanishes like he's he's um, walked off and, because well unnoticed by everyone else and Aladdin, Jasmine approaches him outside and tells him that 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 you stole something, and he realizes he still has the um, the brooch from you know the hair brooch he he got from her, and she then approaches and he she approaches him and they kiss and then we tra- transforms trans we kind of we move a day or two later, or a week or two later, later into and the they're future, having a marriage and they're having a wedding party and everyone is dancing. And stuff like that. And Genie's there along with the Dalila. And they're all... Ha- I think so. they got married at the same time. Maybe. Yeah, I think they had we a, think, I think they have a double maybe, wedding. Yeah. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Yeah. And the and then we have we cut to um, everyone doing a dance sequence. Right. You know, like a Bollywood in the, production. In a Bollywood yeah. type way. <laughs> and it was kind of beautiful. And it was kind of fun just watching everyone dance to You Got a Friend in Me. Damn. Blah. Fade and to black. Fade to black. Okay, there That's you it. Well, I'm not going to talk too much about this because you, 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 uh, you did waffle a bit, Sorry, as yes. usual. Now, okay, right. Um, right, right. I won't talk about that bit. Um, when they decided to do this, when I'm talking about it originally, they wanted, it was going to be 
a non-traditional take oh. on Aladdin. A little bit. Yeah, so they, did, they wouldn't, didn't want to copy the cartoon totally. Yeah, yeah. No, special. The animated one. And they, didn't want, and they didn't want to turn out like the Prince of Persia either. So they wanted to do, take a fresh look at it. Yeah, okay. Um, blah, blah, I won't go into all the casting stuff. One thing they had to worry about was they were looking for, believe it or not, people who could uh, complain, Middle Eastern Indian extractor people to fill the roles, or the main roles, okay, who could sing and dance and carry the roles. It gets back to what I keep saying. Uh, you, 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 sometimes you're not going to get them. Yeah. So you have to fill in. Um, so yeah. anyway, they did actually... Um, um, they had to do a casting. Direct, they I did mean, cast, cast, okay. I mean, directing casting. The director had the the casting director has to cast the right yes, people. For I the know show that, thing. and that's yeah. what I did. And the, and the last one they actually cast, I think, was Aladdin because they were looking for someone who suited the role down to a T who could sing, dance, do whatever. Yeah, and, and can act um, because he had a, bit, a little bit. He, he did a bit of dance and he did a bit of singing and he had to do the acting and he had to work well with the one of the two girls they chose for the role of Jasmine. Uh, he was, yeah, so... Um, um, uh, Mena Masood, uh, he was the uh, one finally chosen and then they chose the uh, nice lady to pay his, um, his partner. He's mm. uh, Jasmine. Okay, right. Um, filming. Here we go. Good stuff. I, I like getting some meaty stuff occasionally. Pencil photography began September in 2017, and it was wrapped in two thousand uh, January 2018. Mm. Uh, now, a lot of it was done at Longcross Studios in Surrey, England. However, okay. part of the film was shot in Wadi Rum Desert in Jordan. Ooh. We've been to Jordan, and I think well, if they did Wadi Rum, they I think they did Lawrence of Arabia in the same area. Ooh. I think Wadi Rum was the area they used for it, yeah. And there's nothing out there. It's sandy and rocky and stuff, and, yeah, and it looks like a desert. But it's not too far from Jordan and other places where they can see go back to the cities and towns or whatever. Um, what else? Um, the film's production sets were designed by the Game of Thrones production designer. Really cool. Uh, Gemma Jackson. Now, the Prince Ali musical sequence features, here we go, 1,000 dancers and extras. Cool. Now, Cessa B. DeMille, eat your heart out. Okay. Uh-huh. Yay, right. Um, and Will Smith frequently improvised throughout the film. That's cool. So he's made it up and he went along. <laughs> so, hey, this will work, you know. Yeah. So he desi- did his own dance. Oh, not all. No, well, it's just improvised. I don't. I mean, that could be his movements. He's dancing. He's talking. You know, mm. cracking one-liners. Uh, he he improvised. Okay. Huh. Yeah. I love the bit where yeah. he says, "Be specific with the detail." Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. Now here's something. Masood also revealed that there was a whole scene where Prince Ali and Jeannie meet the royal family for the first time, and that was improvised by the whole cast. Mm. It wasn't actually written up properly, they just did it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, they're right in the spirit of things. But yeah. Now, visual effects, industrial light and magic. We've heard that name banded around, haven't we, folks? They were in there. Uh, no doubt there. They d- what? They're always in there. Um, I won't go into controversies about racial discrimination and racial blending and stuff. It's all bullshit anyway. It is a load of bull. Uh, because if, if, they want to, if they can find something to complain about, they'll complain about it. You know? I don't understand. I mean, considering that I don't see a very big racial problem here. Yeah. Considering the main actors were of Middle East and yeah. Indian sort of uh, roots. Yeah. If we had to go back... A and few then you've got people saying, oh, you're playing favourites, now you're putting those people in. Oh, give us a break, you know. Um, I don't know what their big problem is, considering that they're cast in the way what the characters may have, would look have looked it, like if look they were yeah, still Aladdin, alive. Jasmine, her father, the Sultan, the Vizier, Jafar, they were all from the Middle East. Yeah. Is it? You know, oh, oh, it's reverse bias now. Oh, give us a break. Yeah. Okay, get I, over it, people. Uh, yeah, um, I'm starting to think this whole um, reverse bias thing is a load of yeah. 
Monkey they doodle. did the right thing. They chose the right people. They said, okay, we want to get the right feel for it. And they actually chose some people who suited the role. And actually, they did try to get them from the Middle East and that area in, in mm. India and those places. And they got some. So there. <laughs> okay. At least the guy who was playing the nutty, the um, the snob, the... Um, the um, idiot. The weird the prince. I- he, weird prince. He was. Um, he was. Um, I haven't got his name written down here, but yeah, he, he was um, probably a token white guy. Yeah. Yeah. No, that did because I mean, he, most of the other people weren't. No, they that's were true. the uh, yeah. Middle Eastern. That's true. Anyhow, here we go. Rotten Tomatoes, fifty-seven uh, uh, percent. They, they they were comparing it to the original movie, so yeah. Gee. Oh, we like the animated one better. Hey, come on. Um, Metacritic's um, same sort of thing, mixed average reviews. Mm. Cinema score gave it an A to an A plus. Yeah, I mean, oh, no, an A, A, sorry, an A, and they reckon it was quite good. Yeah, they I definitely mean, reckon. Yeah, go on, Mike. Why do you do this to me when I'm trying to do my bit? Go on, Mike. Like I don't matter. Do you want to do this by yourself? Nope. Here's a piece of paper. Go on, Mike. Okay. okay. Uh, Chicago Sun, uh, he gave it three out of four stars. Uh, Variety's, uh, Variety summarised the review with Will Smith steps into Robin Williams' shoes, bringing a fresh attitude to the role, etc., etc., etc. He feels did a good job. Uh, more fantastic, uh, uh, whatever, where it must be Russian or something, or somebody, uh, gave the film an 8 out of 10, saying it was probably the best Disney live-action remake to date. Yeah. Um, despite praising the cast, William Bebiani of uh, the, the rap said of the film, if you don't think about it very hard, although you probably should, the remake of Ladder might entertain you. Uh, but he said it wasn't all that good. That's his person. That's his view. That's yeah. his view. Yeah. He's probably still going back to, oh, the cartoon was better. Um, well, they do have different... Um, this, there is something wonderful to say about yeah. the 90s one. And well, also, there is something wonderful about this it. one. It really had magic in it. And I think um, Robin Williams really brought the genie role uh, to life. Pardon the pun scene. It was uh, animated. Um, <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Somebody, uh, Mark Kennedy from Associated Press, uh, bad guy, Richie's direction of it. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, before filming had started, some commentators criticised racial politics implied by the film's production elements and plot. Gee. Hello? Uh, some expressed scepticism at the conclusion of the casting process about its conflation of Arab and Middle Eastern culture and lack of specific sp- lack of something in care. And again, what? They're going Where are they writing they're, they're here? They're doing a fantasy. <laughs> it's not supposed to be historically accurate. Yeah. It's and not. And, and they're yeah. not. They did sort of. Uh, say, uh, um, in review in Seber, C- C- Seven Iber, whatever, mm-hmm. um, someone uh, said that the people, uh, the people and the setting looked more like India than a city in the Middle East. Who said it was in the Middle East anyway? Um, mm-hmm. See, so also uh, critique gendered the Orientalist stereotypes as refined by the film writing that. In the eyes of Disney and Hollywood, a stereotypical image of an Arab girl, the belly dancer with a small waist and long hair and a dark skin, uh, a jealous and chivalrous Arab man defending and protecting his woman from harm's way is much more attractive than actual Arabs who are truly boring in reality. <laughs> so, um, I don't know how to take that. I don't um, even know what they're talking about. No, nah, they're time. just saying, D- Disney says, hey, stereotype, a good-looking babe and a nice hero to protect her instead of what they really look like in their own country. Mm. Uh, some guy who's got her dressed up in a, what do you call those things, a burka and locking her up so no one can see her. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I think they're, yeah, yeah. they're trying to apply that. They're more interesting in yeah, the, I don't even yeah. understand why they're trying yeah. to um, try to 
don't they realize that they're trying yeah. to make it like it's fun. The, um, resemble a little bit like the animation, and like a storybook and, and yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's not going to be. I don't know. I never been to Arabia when well, it was we've back been to in. Many, Egypt no, and stuff. I know that I've been to yeah, Egypt. Similar, Mike. Similar. I meant like many centuries ago, oh, better, and yeah. back to what what the royals may have worn back then. What they considered was um, the proper dress yeah, yeah. codes. Or stuff like that, considering what what did the um, Sultan wore, considering what kind of clothing he would have worn anyway. back then, and the kings and princes, what they wear. Well, here's something I just want to finish off with. The 1992 animated version received related critiques about the racialization and othering, whatever that means, yeah. of its characters in the script. So you, the animated version was bad because it's yeah. or, um, racialization. And this movie was bagged for its racialization, but people win, went to we? see the film. Yeah, people I'd, paid good money to see it, and they enjoyed it. Hello. Why are they continue using all these what? minority groups to get that? Oh, we don't like because of this. Why do they keep ra- waving it. that flag around? Yeah, the, yeah this, yeah, this uh, racial thing and whatever. If, if it was a white bo- person, uh, racial yeah. bias and yeah. stuff. Get off your high horse. Go home, take up knitting or something or other. You know, yeah, come on. Get that's over another it. thing. Yeah. I mean, they keep waving the fact that these people are from the. Some of these people are from different countries. Yeah, they've actually gone so far in this they've one to actually, actually yeah. place people from the Middle East in that yeah. in this movie. If it was actually, what more can they do? if it was actually <laughs> a white person, like I know in the past they they, played, did. they, they did, did it with a lot of other action, oh, yeah. live action. But in ones the old days, they, back they, in the that day. was easier to get a white actor in America to play but, somebody like uh, Hercules. Say, yeah, that Steve Reeves played Hercules. Now Hercules wasn't American. Yeah, well, we know that. We know so, that. But Steve Reeves played Hercules in some movies. Yeah, and bear in yeah. mind, yeah. Um, the Middle East they did, um, they did have a mixture of people walking in and out. I mean, considering yeah. they did have trades trade people who would often trade there, met different cultures, yeah, stuff like right. that, mingling with one another. Stuff Light like skinned that. people, dark skinned people, Oriental people, Middle Eastern people, all mixed into a big melting pot. Yeah. 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 So I don't anyway. really see what's they're getting at when but, actually. Um, I rather, I rather see um, an actual person from a different country playing this particular role than than just an ordinary, out of the blue actor who just um, happens yeah. to be not be part of that nationality group yeah. because they just thought um, we're just go casting because he looks good looking for the role. I mean, sure, I've done. The, I sure I've went. Down, I pulled that. I've put, said the same thing you, in the past. But I usually look for you, you look um, an image. looking for the right look image? for yeah, image, image. Yeah, yeah. and along with the acting. I mean, yeah, as long as they can act and yeah, they can pull off the yeah, role, the whole, then I can have yeah, the whole image. The way they look, the way they talk, yeah, the, the package. But the image, you, you're creating an image. And that's yeah. what's like. It's like Picasso or Da Vinci doing a painting or something rather. They go out the marketplace there and they look for somebody. Mm, no, no. Oh, that person come here. I want to paint you. You've got the face I need for this piece of artwork I want to do. Mm-hmm. It's an interesting face that conveys a message. Yeah. It's been going on for mm. decades, centuries, yeah. whatever. Yeah. This first, first yeah. bias stuff is a lot mm. of bull. Yeah. They, they just they complain if we we cast someone who's white to play these leads, and when we and when we don't oblige, they call us racist. Yeah. And when we do oblige and do what they want, and we're still we racist. We're still racist. <laughs> so you can't we win. We can't. We can't win. No. Anyway, here we go. I'm going to get straight on to the grading it. I'm going to give this a ten. I don't often give a ten, but I think it, hit, it hits all the right buttons and the production really, really good. And if you don't compare it to the animated version of Robin Williams and treat it like a standalone movie as it is, um, yeah, you'll find it's a really good watch and the acting's really good, the filming's good, the costume's good, the storyline's good, the continuity's good, everything's good about the movie. Mm-hmm. As, we, as you would expect from a movie of this calibre with that amount of money thrown at it. Yeah. Okay, that, that money has not been wasted. Mm-hmm. So, And I'm also... Going to uh, say one thing, um, I would say, yeah, I would agree with one of the guys that it's one of the better Disney live action remakes. Yeah, I agree. I would agree. Well, mm. it's 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 a good one. I think both have captured something good. I like the animated one, oh, and yeah. I do like some elements from this one a little bit. Yeah, but, but I like it. I mean, not all of it, but just some bits I like. It's, but I try to treat them as different movies. 
Yes. Like we saw the Bollywood Aladdin one. I yes, that like we a bit, did. Yeah, which and we was quite fun. And yeah. we saw the um, let me see. That, that series you had. The, the series. Yeah, yeah. And we saw. Uh, let me see the that independent Aladdin, which was called the the um, Adventures of Aladdin um, in His Lamp. Yeah, yeah. It's a, that one that we that came out directly at the same time as this one, yeah. and therefore has caused a lot of problems with some fans yeah. out there. So the point is. They're all, I try to evaluate each movie or production as a separate individual. I don't say, oh, well, you're copying something else, or it's a remake, or it's a reboot. No, no, I try to treat them as a separate individual, see if it works. And mm-hmm. so, and I reckon this movie works. So, there you go. Uh, do you want to rate it? Yeah, I think I'll rate it How now. How much? I'm going to say 9 out of 10. Okay, good. Now, we're running into overtime here again, as usual. Uh, availability, you can get plenty on eBay and you get uh, on Amazon, there's plenty of the, and it's rentable. Um, so you should be able to get other places as well as. I would sincerely suggest those of you who like a little bit of a musical fantasy film and it's still fun, there's a bit of comedy in there and whatever yeah. and stuff. It's a good watch. The kids will like it, your grandma will like it. Yeah. It's a good mixture. It's and the music's watch. not yeah. too bad. Yeah. I mean, I like the fact when, with all the uh, fam- the famous songs, there's some really good, interesting bits that you you might Easter eggs there in those scene, in some of those. I bits. didn't see any product placements. I didn't see a Coke or any Marlboro cigarettes on the table. I know, or, but or I meant like I meant um, Easter eggs from from the animation that were brought into the this one. Oh, I That's see. What I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. They won't anyway. kill us. These people want to go to bed. We're yeah, getting sure, over, guys. We're, we're um, over time. Thanks for listening to our last podcast, everyone. Um, I'm sorry for running over time as per usual. We, do, we often do that. We often waffle, <laughs> but it's not our problem because when we will review a movie... We get so like, excited. When we review such a movie as, as popular as this, we run through it. Like, like, like running through the fire, if we will. I didn't want to bring that up, but I thought I might bring it up anyway. Anyway, mm, thanks someone. for listening to us, everyone. This is Sarah Stevenson. And Markle saying see you guys around on Boys and Ghouls. See you guys next time. Bye.